Unit 4.1 Practice Problems Equimolar samples of CH3OH and C2H5OH are placed in separate previously evacuated rigid 2 liter vessels. Each vessel is attached to a pressure gauge and the temperatures are kept at 300 Kelvin. In both vessels, liquid is observed to remain present at the bottom of the container at all times. The change in pressure inside the vessel containing C3OH is shown below. I think they mean here. Which of the following best describes the change uh, that takes place immediately after the CH3OH liquid is introduced to that previously evacuated vessel? Uh, so, when we put the liquid in the previously evacuated vessel, there are no gas particles above, so that's why our uh, pressure was in the initially at zero. However, we start to get some pressure that's coming off, and that means that we have molecules that are coming out of the liquid and starting to go into a gaseous state and starting to hit that pressure gauge, which is why we are measuring a pressure. Now, we go from a liquid to a gaseous state when we break intermolecular attraction uh, and can escape and go from one state of matter to another. So that is going to be a physical change that takes place between um, uh, liquid to gas, and that is when those intermolecular attractions are overcome. And the exothermic process represented above is best classified as, so we have water, oh, sorry, um, hydrogen peroxide decomposing into water and oxygen. Um, and since we have a, a change in the molecular structure, this is going to be a chemical change. And it is a chemical change because we have changed the covalent bonds that were present and we formed new covalent bonds. So that would be option choice D, because I no longer have what I had at the beginning. A student had two dilute colorless solutions, HCl and NaOH, uh, which were at the same temperature. The student combined the solutions and the reaction represented above occurred. Which of the following results would be evidence that a chemical reaction took place? So for a chemical reaction taking place, we are looking for a change in color, a change in temperature, an evolution of a gas or a solid. Um, and those are gonna be our main, uh, our main things that we're looking at. But we have two colorless solutions and then we are going to be forming salt water, which is also a colorless solution. So colorless, um, everything remaining colorless does not uh, evoke a change has happened at all. Uh, the volumes being approximately equal to the sum is not going to be an unexpected change. Um, the temperature, on the other hand, uh, changing does indicate a change. A temperature change is indicative of a chemical reaction. And then the uh, resulting solution conducts electricity. Uh, this would uh, let us know that a change happened if I was not able to conduct electricity in the initial uh, reactants. But I would be able to conduct electricity in the initial reactants, so that is not a good um, indicator of, of a chemical reaction happening. A student was asked to formulate a hypothesis about what would happen if 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide at 25 degrees Celsius was combined with 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar magnesium chloride at 25 degrees Celsius. Which of the following hypothesis um, indicates that the student thought a chemical change would occur? So again, a chemical change um, is typically indicated by a change in color, a change in temperature, either raising or lowering the temperature, an evolution of gas or solid. So um, the resulting solution being approximately equal to the volume of the original solutions added together, that is not um, indicative of a change. The mass of the resulting solution being equal to the sum of the masses of the original, that is the law of conservation of mass. That does not indicate a chemical change at all. 
The resulting solution would contain a precipitate. A precipitate is a solid that has evolved from two liquids. So that is um, going to indicate a chemical change. We have uh, evolved a solid. And the last one is the results the resulting uh, solutions will be clear. If my initial solutions were also clear, that does not indicate a change. Um, but if my initial solutions were colored, which they were not marked to be colored, uh, then them suddenly becoming clear would be an indicator of a chemical change. So my evolution of a precipitate or suddenly forming a solid where there was none previous is going to be my best indication that uh, the student is predicting that a uh, chemical reaction is going to occur. A student was studying physical and chemical changes. The student carried out some procedures in the lab and recorded observations. For one of the procedures, the student concluded that a physical change took place, not a chemical change. Which of the following could have been the results of the procedure? So um, as a reminder, chemical changes are fundamental changes. The thing that I had is fundamentally different than the thing that I had previously. Whereas a physical change is a non-fundamental change, it is still that same substance, it just might be in a different shape or form. So A, uh, the option A is a cube of metal is changed into a flat sheet of metal, so it is still the same metal, it has just changed shapes, so that's a good potential here. Uh, when two liquids at room temperature were combined into a beaker, the beaker became hot. Uh, the change in temperature is an indicator of a chemical change, so that is not a good indicator of a physical change. When two clear liquids were combined, the resulting mixture was cloudy. We have uh, produced a precipitate, so that is also not a good indicator of a physical change. When the colorless liquid was added to the blue liquid, the solution was yellow. We had a uh, color change here that also indicates a chemical change. So A being that a cube of metal just changed into a different shape, that is going to be our uh, best indication that we just had a physical change take place rather than a chemical one.